Welcome everybody to this special webinar. Today, we're hoping to teach you how to use the power of artificial intelligence to help you with your fundraising, communication, outreach, and content creation for your nonprofit. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. Before uh, we get started, I just want to go over a few housekeeping and then I'll turn it over to TAP Network. This is being recorded. I know many of you always love to watch the video replay. So we're gonna send you the video replay um, within 48 hours, maybe tomorrow with the slides. Also, if you need the closed caption, just type on that CC button at the bottom of your screen. You'll be able to um, see the transcripts. We will be answering your questions at the end of this webinar. So use the Q&A section to type your questions. We know a lot of you will still type in the chat section. So we'll try to grab those as well. I'm excited the tech network is here. Always love um, hearing from them, learning from them. So I'm gonna turn it over to the two co-founders of Tech Network. We have Kyle Barkins and Joe, you know, I don't wanna mess your name up, but you know, I love you. <laughs> hey folks. Thanks, Aretha. Um, hi, yeah, I'm Joe DiGiovanni with Tap Network. Co-founder Kyle is joining me and Tarek will be joining shortly as well. And we're gonna talk about nonprofits and unleashing the power of AI. And I know you've seen it in the news um, and everyone's talking about it and, and making crazy images and, and, and coming up with mission statements and, and a lot. But it's really, um, it's really interesting and exciting how we can really harness all this and actually create in a phased approach, really start to leverage AI to support the nonprofits. So um, I'll give you a quick background on TAP. We're a mission-driven mission marketing and technology agency. Uh, we are a strategic partner with TechSoup. So if you go to TechSoup and click on services, we do web development, we do marketing uh, services all through TechSoup as well. And we provide discounted services, just like you would get discounted services for software. We provide the actual services to implement this. And we use AI in a lot of our clients and our clients who are using AI. So it's it's a it's always growing, it's always evolving. And so today we're gonna to share some, uh, some tips and best practices. So just a quick overview of today's discussion. We'll talk about what is AI, how does it benefit nonprofits? And then we'll look at use cases. Um, everything from you know, how, how we can use it to volunteering, fundraising, for marketing and, um, and, and promotion as well. And we'll look at different types of AI, writing AI, voice AI, um, photo-driven AI, video-driven AI. And then we'll look at tools that are established platforms that are already in use, plus a lot of uh, innovative cutting edge tools that are coming along and the prompts as well. Um, and then we'll wrap this up with a live demo. A lot of these slides have a ton of text, but the only reason we're doing that is because there's so much information and links and prompts and scripts we want to share with everybody. So bear with us, but we think we'll, we'll share this document at the end and you know we'll run through these live as well. Um, so hopefully all this will, will, will come together and we'll answer some questions at the end too. Awesome, thanks Joe. Um, as Joe was saying, You'll see a lot of text on these slides. I'm not going to try, read from them um, at some points. We'll just call some things out. But the idea is once we turn this over to you all at the end, we'll have great links in there and we'll have some prompts um, that you'll be able to follow pretty quick, pretty easily. Uh, we'll just jump right in, though. So what is AI? AI is, you know, I'm sure you, the, the buzzword these days, is artificial intelligence. Um, it's basically anything that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. So and can augment that human intelligence. So. You know, if you might have, if, if you might need to, to create a blog post or something like that, you're going to need to go out there and manually do the research, uh, find out, get all the information about that, that topic or the, the whatever source you're, you're writing about, uh, and then put that into words and put that on your computer, like build that into, a, into your computer in Microsoft Word, then upload that to your website, then push it out through your social media channels. Well, with artificial intelligence, you can rely on that to do something like do the research for you possibly create the outline for you, might even go to write the post for you, and even go as far as to, to post that out and push that out through your social media channels. We'll go through some examples of that today. Um, and AI is really that set of technologies that allows you to do that. So this is the ability to see, understand, and translate uh, written and spoken language, analyze that data, make recommendations, and become smarter over time. Um, 
with the inputs that we give to it and that it is able to, to pull in, you know, across uh, different databases and across, across the internet, across the, the, the world. Some common AI applications, I'll let Joe cover some of these that you might see in your everyday life. One AI application could be unmuting Joe's computer so we could all hear him. <laughs> I thought I had the AI auto mute on. <laughs> yeah, so number one, we're used to this. So we have face ID on our, on our computers and that's a learning algorithm that you know learns our face and facial expressions. Um, social media, AI works behind the scenes to see what's on our feeds and recommends content and friends posts and things of that nature. And then from Google search, Google, the AI has always been working there, bringing recommendations and search results based on our, our preferences and, and what we visited on the web. And of course, advertising is where basically AI started. And that's based on you know, the ads that we see as we go about the web and on our phone and mobile and everything else. Those, those AI applications have already been in use and, and are, are just continuing to get more powerful. And this also includes, you know, um, commuting to work when you're when you're driving in your car, you know, the, the the maps that's AI. For banking, if you deposit a check with your phone, you'll get a, a low balance alert. Um, Netflix recommended for every member of, of of Netflix, even the people who are stealing your account, you'll see them up there. They're getting their own personalized recommendations. Um, digital assistants, Alexa, Siri, they're learning your voice, they're learning your preferences. And even in marketing, especially uh, like marketing automation, HubSpot has been a leader in, in marketing with their CRM and um, CMS implementations. Thanks. So some there's kind of broken down into like three different types of AI tools. There's multiple, more than, more than these, but this is sort of the premise of these things. So there's machine learning tools. These are things that use algorithms and learn data and optimize performance over time. So we'll talk about some things today. One might be like donor donor matching or donor donor identification. Um, as we add more data to, to that system and they can start to process, put machine learning tools over top of that, that, that system gets smarter and smarter and says, okay, you know, people like this are more likely to donate or people from this area are more likely to donate and they can create these, they, you cre they create these models, but then um, create some predictive analytics around that. So some examples you might see kind of in the larger, in the larger uh, world would be like Stick It Learn, um, TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, Microsoft Azure, machine learning. Uh, there's tons of machine learning studios out there. Um, the more common one that we're seeing frequently with like things like ChatGPT uh, and uh, like, Siri, like Siri and Alexa, things that Joe was talking about are natural language processing AI tools. And these are ones that, that process human language, uh, whether that's text or actual spoken input, um, and then are able to respond to those and give you, you know, expected results. So if you think of the difference between something like Google and ChatGPT, Google, you go in, you type some keywords in, you might say like running sneakers, right? Uh, and then you get a bunch of results that are based on running sneakers, based on Google's algorithm to t figure out what they think you want, what they think you want to see based on that versus uh, natural language processing would be that contextual search that you would say, what are the best running sneakers for someone who's six feet tall and has flat feet? And then that would spit out some of that. And then you could ask additional questions on that. Okay, why are these, why are these better for someone who, for someone in that, in that situation? Natural language processing can spit that information out based on that contextual question. So you can start to have these, these uh, almost like discussions with a natural language processing AI tool. Uh, and then the, the third is uh, cognitive computing tools. These are ones that are supposed to think like humans. Um, so a lot of times you'll see these things that, the, well, not, not, almost every time, these things are paired together. You're gonna have machine learning tools bolted onto a natural language processing. So natural language processing is sort of the front end where this stuff goes in and it makes these, these um, these recommendations for you. Cognitive computing is going to be what's on the back that's making those decisions and giving you that, that problem solving. So some examples of things like this that have been around for a while or are, are new and evolving are like IBM Watson, uh, Google's Cloud AI, Amazon AI. You can see the other uh, examples listed here as well. Some popular tools that, that 
take advantage of those technologies are GPT-3, which is what kind of runs behind chat GPT. This is the uh, GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer version three. Um, it's that language model that, that we've all seen out there and probably not all seen out there, but many of us have seen out there at this point um, in the chat GPT program. Uh, the other tool would be BERT, bidirectional encoder representations from transformers is how Google uses that. So GPT-3 is open AI, BERT is, is Google, um, and it's shown uh, a pretty significant increase uh, of natural understanding or natural language understanding and understanding sentiment analysis. So like how you know, voice inflection or um, you know, what, what someone's hoping to get out of, of the questions that they ask. Uh, and then you have other ones like AlphaGo and AlphaZero, which are the deep learning models on Google. And then DALI2, which would be the, um, the image, image generation piece that's kind of bolted on to ChatGPT or like the sister of ChatGPT. Uh, and what that can do is like, as we'll show some examples today, that can generate images from textual descriptions. So it's still using that natural language processing to see what you're asking for, but then the application itself generates an image. So if you ask it to draw like, um, you can say draw a picture of a, a Labrador retriever, and then you can, but you can add more context to that and say, draw a lifelike picture of, an, of a Labrador retriever, and it'll take, it'll start to evolve, uh, you know, to become something that's more like less cartoon or less abstract or whatever the other, the other styles of, of, uh, of an image might be. So how can nonprofits utilize AI? So we can talk about these things at like a macro level and say, you know, you can create images with these things. You can ask questions. You can have this solve problems for you. But today we're going to really dive deep and talk about how nonprofits can use AI in their uh, in their mission or in their different applications uh, as an organization. We'll cover fundraising, operations, uh, volunteer management, and marketing and outreach. Great, thanks, Kyle. So we'll we'll kick it off with fundraising. Um, Fundraising, there's there's the common tools that are currently being used. So we'll review those and we'll look at some new cutting edge tools that are on the horizon. Um, so for the next slide, we're gonna discuss uh, four, four main ways we can leverage AI for, for fundraising. And it's really about predicting analytics, um, segmenting your donors, automating your fundraising, and then really, um, leveraging that even more through chatbots. And that's where the automation can come in in, in real time and engage. Um, so for predictive analytics, that's where you can analyze the donor behavior, giving history, demographics, communication uh, preferences, and predict which one of the folks in your database is most likely to give, when they're gonna give, what elements of your mission that they're willing to give to, and, and their propensity to, to, to fund your nonprofit. Um, there's organizations out there like Wealth Engine. Um, they they look at over 250 million data points for um, you know on, on on your members on your donor bases to give those analytics. St. Jude's Hospital is a big user of forecasting, giving patterns, and identifying those high potential donors. So predictive analytics they're just going to continue to grow, but there's tools and platforms that are already being used by some of the leading nonprofits out there. Donor segmentation, that's another early adopting uh, segment of uh, fundraising. So AI can help generate donors based on their interests and giving patterns, and this can help tailor fundraising appeals and, and engagement. So everything going back to um, MailChimp and, and constant contact to more robust CRMs, like, like we mentioned, HubSpot, um, and, and even others, where if you a lot of nonprofits just getting started in, in that initial basics of, of AI is, is where you could start. UNICEF uh, uses Pareto. So there's a lot of tools that specifically do that. And then automating all your fundraising. Automation is when you set up detailed workflows and algorithms for a fundraiser. So they might come to your site see certain content and say, wow, I'm, I'm very interested in the celiac association. I'm looking up gluten-free recipes. People are getting engaged that way. You know where they live. And then you could start to target them specifically with, with emails, recommend restaurants in their area. They become very engaged. They could become a member. You offer them membership and then, and then go after the donations. But all of those are automated fundraising, AI-driven workflows or scripts that you could set up on the back end of your website. 
Um, Rally is a very powerful tool. HubSpot uh, as well, they have those type of algorithms. And then finally, chatbots. You're seeing chatbots. There's two kinds, really. There's the basic chatbots when you come to your nonprofit website and it could basically say, hi, what's your name? What are you interested in? And it's just a basic list of three or four responses. But at the very least, you're getting someone's name and email, and then you can follow up directly. And as chatbots, there's more advanced versions where you can literally, you know, if you think about ChatGPT now and the power there, where you can literally run through a conversation and possibly get somebody to, to take an action. So that's a, a quick overview of the, of the four elements. And now Kyle will go through some of the specific tools and, and how to use them in terms of fundraising. Thanks. Yeah, so as we as mentioned earlier, uh, I'm not going to go into every single one of these specifically. We'll give you some examples from each one, uh, but we left these on here for you all to, after the presentation, be able to take, you know, and kind of go down those rabbit holes of, on your own with some of the context we give you today. So just some, some examples of tools would be like ChatGPT, which we, you know, we started to talk about, and we'll show you some real life examples on later. Uh, donate lead for donations, Google ads that if you, if you aren't using this already, uh, you know, apply that some of the, the AI and machine learning. Uh, donor search, fundraise up, Textio, and Benevity. And I'll give a, a high level each one. So Benevity is that corporal social responsibility platform. It uses AI um, so that nonprofits can, can engage directly with their donors and their employees. Um, so this is like for creating giving campaigns, setting up matching donations, and allowing their employees at, at, the, at the, the corporations that, that are using it to um, give back and become more, more engaged. Donately is the donation processing platform. So it uses, uses AI to process like to prevent fraudulent transactions. It also optimizes like optimizes your user experience um, so that you would get like higher conversion rates. Some examples would be asking contextually um, like levels of donation based on you know past donations that someone's made, or um, if if we have more information about that demographic, uh, it can make sure that like, for example, it's not asking someone that's in college for that, you know, maybe strapped for cash or something like that for thousands of dollars for a donation, but would be, would say, you know, can you, can you spare $5 for this organization? Uh, Fundraise Up is another donation platform that uses that same, th those machine learning algorithms uh, to do the same sort of thing. So optimize conversion rates uh, and, and base it on previous donor behavior. What's important to note about these things is this is uh, the information that these or like the, the experience that these are going to put out is really only as good as the information you put in. So it's going to need, in many cases, need information about your past donors, your past donor relationships. And so the more data you have, like in a CRM or an existing donation management platform, the better this stuff is going to be. Um, Google ads, as we as you, you all might, might know, but it's been around for years and, and it uses the AdWords platform to optimize your ad performance uh, for what you want, what you're trying to advertise. So not only the actual text that shows up, but you know where it shows up in searches as well, um, using AI as the the underlying technology behind that. Donor search is will allow you to prospect better donors. Same thing again. So you know understanding who your current donor base is, this can kind of go out there and help you find uh, more people like that, or allow you to search through their 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 system to find you know match match donors of sort. Um, and then lastly, the one we, we, we're going to talk about or we, we're, talk, we're showcasing here would be Textio, um, which is a writing platform. So it suggests like content improvements, emails, grant applications, um, fundraising, more, much more geared toward in that, that nonprofit space in, in this example, much more geared towards, you know, um, promoting engagement or soliciting engagement um, and then how you can engage your donors, supporters, volunteers in a better way without you having to manually go in and try to figure out what they're gonna to respond to, what they're gonna to react to, what type of messaging um, is, is relevant to them. So uh, we'll showcase some of these later, but one of the quickest ways to get started for, for, for fundraising is just using ChatGPT. So going to the ChatGPT website, uh, we'll show some examples to, toward the end of the presentation of doing this, but some examples of use cases and the, and the, the corresponding prompts for those would be, you know, let's say you wanted to write donation page copy uh, you could get as very as simple as saying to ChatGPT, "Hey, write a thank you letter or write write copy for a donation page for this this campaign." 
or for a targeted email outreach, you could say, write a thank you letter to send to donors for my nonprofit. Or if you wanted to generate social media content, you could say, uh, you know, write a social media post for the name of your nonprofit and then the name of the fundraising event. Um, but as I was mentioning earlier, the data, what you get out is, is really only going to be as good as what you put in. So the more descriptive you can be on what you expect from expect the system to create, the better it's going to create that. So you can get very granular and say, you know, let's, let's use the thank you letter to send to donors. Um, you could say, write a thank you letter to send to donors that have contributed more than, uh, you know, $500 over the past three years asking them to contribute an additional amount this year. And then, then it would come up with more specific context around that. Um, or you could give you know even more data there. So write a, write a donation, a thank you letter to donors in this part of the country, asking them about what they like the most about donating to or, or engaging with this organization and just get very contextual there. And I think Tarek will show you some examples of, of, of how to get this, get this out of the system uh, later in these slides. One other thing that 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 you you can think about doing when you're asking for chat GPT prompts, you can ask actually tell chat GPT what you want it to know or, or like the expertise you want it to have. So you could say, you know, use your um, understanding of grant writing to create me an outline for um, soliciting funds for a nonprofit organization through a grant for X, Y, and Z. And then that that way you you've told chat GPT now to like, use that part of its of its data model to, as a grant writer or content context on grant writing instead of just giving it like a blanket request uh same thing like if you're asking it to um like we use it you know in for example in website development for and we, we would say let's say i wanted something written in javascript we would say use your experience in in javascript coding to develop a, a script that does x y and z using these things so the more context you can put into this, the better of a result you're going to get out of that. There's that, so that we talked about AI for, for fundraising, we'll talk about AI for operations now. So how you can use this for your capacity stand from a capacity standpoint, or use this um, to, to for operational efficiencies on even more like a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so nonprofits can use AI to automate like routine tasks to think about things like collecting information, data entry, scheduling things like social media posts or scheduling, uh, you know, volunteers. Um, it can also help you predict future demands and resource needs. Uh, you know, if you put that in there and say, you know, let's let's help help categorize these things, help line these things up. Um, and by doing that, you can streamline your internal operations, reduce that administrative time, um, possibly, you know, re even reduce headcount in some cases where you've got you know, a lot of administrative tasks. One thing we really like about using something like AI for this, uh, you know, working with nonprofits, we know a lot of you have volunteers uh, or interns, and that usually creates, a, that usually means there's gonna be a lot of turnover. So they might be there for a semester, they might be there for a season, they might be there for you know, a limited amount of time. And you're not gonna stop using interns or, or volunteers, but if you can offset some of their day-to-day -day sort of tasks to, to an AI, to an AI platform, then you can have them do more meaningful work for you all, whether that's you know, you know, direct outreach um, or hand, you know, hands-on engagement within your community. And then that way you know that that you still have that continuity in place. So as a new volunteer comes on board, AI can be managing the administrative stuff or um, some of those other those day-to-day -day tasks. So as we said, you can automate routine tasks. Um, some some examples you'll see on these slides. I won't go through every single one. Um, you can do, use predictive analytics in in operations, so you know help allocate those resources more efficiently based on you know past experience. So if we know that you know these these event, let's say we do a monthly event, uh, and we need three three volunteers for each event, and here's my list of volunteers. Here's the list of availability. Here's their list of um, of you know what what they're what they specialize in. Through an AI tool, you could dump that stuff into there and then have that create like a, a, a schedule um, to manage your resources. Using natural language processing, uh, as we as we said, like in something like ChatGPT or using a model like that. The example here is the crisis text line. They use natural language processing to analyze text messages that, that they get, incoming text messages and, and phone calls they receive from people in crisis to help identify you know how, where that should go so if someone says you know i'm having a crisis with this 
uh, you know, that might help with routing. It, it might help, um, you know, identify that this is like high urgency, uh, you know, get a, get a person on the call or, you know, take it to the, the next, the next level of, of questionnaire or whatever it might be. Uh, and then fraud detection, which is, is, is prevalent in nonprofits, uh, especially from donation in donations where there's, you know, fraudulent donations coming in you, using an AI powered tool to, to sort, to sort through that. So you're not manually having to follow up with every single person that makes a donation or, or track that down. Um, from an identity standpoint, or to protect someone's identity uh, using like fraud.net can help pr protect those financial transactions uh, at the, the organization level. So some uh, operations tools that are commonly used in, in AI, ChatGPT, we see organizations use this and recommend uh, use cases for organizations using this every single day um, to help automate tasks, to help do you know sort of research and, and back work, for, um, behind the scenes work for organizations. Uh, Donately, Google Bard. So, in, in, uh, in contrast to ChatGPT, um, Salesforce's nonprofit cloud, uh, OneClick.ai, and Notion.ai are all AI-powered tools um, that would help in the operational space. Sorry, move my thing around here. So, some things you can some some of these tools are like OneClick.ai. It allows nonprofits to create their own predictive models. So you don't need a data expert in in house. Um, I did actually see someone in a chat ask how you could feed data into this to make sure you get you know donor matching. So something like OneClick.ai would be an example of using that. So you put your data there, uh, give it like the the inputs uh, and and what you're expecting to see, and then work through that to 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 build these models for you. Um, Salesforce Salesforce's nonprofit cloud lives on is the CRM piece lives on the Salesforce platform. It's specific for nonprofits, um, but that platform uses AI to help you with donor data, uh, automating fundraising tasks, and using like its machine learning to do to put machine learning in place for your your nonprofit. Uh, and Notion is a writing assistant, so it can help you like write, brainstorm, edit, and summarize uh, content. So just there's other tools like this out there, like things like Jasper can do this as well, but Notion's a great tool that's kind of plugged into a few more, a few more things um, that can help you, you know, augment your, your day-to-day tasks and, and your thinking and help you save time, spend it more wisely on, on, on um, operations within your nonprofit organization. So here's just a quick example of how you would use a note, like a Notion template for operations outlining this stuff um you know you talk about you just give it some background it pulls it also attaches to other tools so you'll know when the next meeting is um you'll know you know who the board of directors is you can attach key documents to it uh and then have this sort of built up in one place that you can use operationally you can also use it for donation management so you can see you can collect all of your donations in one place and have it sort search and filter down by uh, different stages and then categorize those things as well So some chat GPT prompts, just like we had those for fundraising. Here's some examples of, of use cases and prompts um, that you can just plug right into chat GPT and, and start using that, you know, specific to your nonprofit. So if we want to generate a report uh, and like generating reports and statistics, um, you could say, you know, write a predictive model for this organization with this, you know, based on this, this uh, input that we give you. So it could be statistics that you give it uh, or a report that you put in there. Um, you can create a chatbot using ChatGPT. There's going to be some program, like some programming or some other tools you have to plug into for that. Um, but that would be, you know, a good use case of this. Um, or like something like creating a mission and vision statement. You could tell it to write a mission statement for the name of your organization, and again, give it some background on what you want that about about your organization, what you want that mission mission and vision statement to be on, and it'll spit out some examples. And then you can iterate over that. You can say, okay, but update it for these things. So. It, it really becomes this nat almost like a, a, a conversation that you want to have with ChatGPT when you write these prompts. And so I wouldn't expect you to be able to just say, write a mission statement for, let's just say it's TAP Network, write a mission statement for TAP Network, and it's going to spit out you know, in, a, a perfect mission statement. So I don't want people to go in expecting that, but you can fine tune it and say, write a mission statement for TAP Network that talks about how you know, we serve nonprofits and mission-driven organizations doing X, Y, and Z, you know, through technology, marketing, communication, software, whatever. And it would, it would, it would uh, come up with something more contextual based on that. And then you would just give it some more, um, 
some more inputs to, to, to fine tune that down. Now, Joe, it's turn to talk about volunteer management. Great, thanks, Kyle. Yeah, we um, I know for you know from time standpoint, and we're going to go over some live cases as well. So we covered um, a quite a, quite a bit on volunteer management, but we'll we'll go through some of the the key elements. So on the next slide, there's there's personalized matching. So Neon One is a really great uh, tool as an example to match volunteers of organizations. Uh, based on their skill levels and their and their interests. Uh, automated scheduling, that's where you can automate routine volunteer management tasks, like Kyle mentioned, whether it's with volunteers or interns. Um, volunteer Hub is, is a really good volunteer tool. Um, Habitat for Humanity uses that. Sentiment analysis is a is another great tool for in terms of AI for, for volunteers. And that's where you can really use the, the uh, analysis and understand the sentiment of folks, um, whether it's sentiment analysis online through social media or other ways where you're, you're looking at the sentiment of your volunteers and, and you can provide that type of feedback. And then retention strategies. How do you get volunteers to, to remain volunteers? Do something something.org uh, uses a lot of volunteer behavior uh, retention um, strategies as well and, that, and that's everything from from messaging to volunteers to seeing you know how they respond what their sentiment analysis is and, and putting them on the projects that's most apt to to their interests some some key volunteer management tools there's Tascade AI chat GPT which we've looked at and notion AI so we can we can go through some of those um, Tascade is great. It's, it's a really good tool to, to, to brainstorm and engage with other folks on your team and with volunteers. If you have a lot of virtual volunteers um, or, you're, or you're trying to brainstorm on an initiative or a campaign, great tool to do that. In terms of actually managing your volunteers, Microsoft has a really nice tool um, and, and Microsoft Cloud to use that as well. Notion AI is it's it's a writing assistant. So if if you're trying to communicate with your volunteers or your volunteers are communicating out in, in the public, um, this is a, a nice tool to use for that as well. And so here, here are some prompts. And, and you can use it for recruiting, scheduling, training, communications, um, even fundraising through your volunteers. So some nice. Nice prompts that we've used on writing a formal appeal letter to former volunteers about donating to my nonprofit. And as Kyle mentioned, the more specific you make that, you know, mention what what they have done or what element of, of their volunteer work, whether it was, um, you know, volunteering to to hand out to hand out food or, or put time into the community. Uh, or if you're recruiting, write a, write a job description for volunteer recruitment for a diabetes association. Create a schedule template for volunteers for shifts and events. Write a volunteer training guide for your nonprofit organization. And then you can even be more specific, you know, training for um, safety, training for marketing and onboarding. Uh, write a thank you letter to your to your volunteers. So again, the more the more detail you write, uh, the more uh, the more specific and and, and better the uh, the prompt will be. But again, make make it more specific. And and ChatGPT is going to be great for your volunteers to recruit them to to give them the tools to to improve their their impact. Which brings us to marketing and outreach. Um, so AI is, is really great for, like Kyle mentioned, everything from creating your mission statement but to the actual marketing outreach, automation, and everything else that's involved in, in the whole marketing mix. So let's take a look at some of those tools. Number one, it's uh, personalization. If you have AI, you, once you capture someone's information and you know their, their behavioral habits on your website and what they're doing throughout the web, and how they're responding to emails, you could really personalize uh, the messaging and see uh, over 50% increase in, uh, in donations. Again, HubSpot, great tool for, for personalized marketing. There's, there's a lot others. 
chatbots as well. We mentioned that, but if you're having a, a conversation with someone through a chatbot and it's, you know, the algorithms are in place, you, you can really personalize the campaign to their interests, their concerns, their questions um, to, to increase donations. And then social media management, um, you can tailor the different types of messaging on your social media, the hashtags, the folks you're reaching, and even when you boost your social media through advertising, that's where uh, the behavioral analytics will, will pop in on social media. And then getting back to, to set the segmentation, um, the workflows that you set up on the back end, you know, whether it's email trip campaigns that are associated with certain, certain segments and content that they've consumed, and the lead scoring that you've set up. If, if a donor comes in, let's say it's the ALS Association, a donor comes in, they read a certain content, they register for an event, all these different triggers will develop a lead score, which will then trigger certain requests and, and donation um, opportunities. So that's just a quick summary of, of how AI is currently being used and, and the, the platforms that you can use it on. Now we're going to get into you know, a little more into the tools of ChatGPT, Google Bar, Synesthesia, and, and Canva. So this is this is kind of where it gets fun. Um, with with these different tools, we can make a big you know a, a big difference. So on the left here, what we have is more or less the brainstorming and writing artificial intelligence. Notion AI. It's it's a way to collaborate everything from project management to task automation. Uh, robot that's to generate new content and ideas for marketing campaigns. Canva, we all know that that's great for developing uh, social media posts right there on a mobile phone, but now the AI element can link into automation platforms like HubSpot, where you can then ma manage and schedule your, your content. Ad creative, that AI is a way to create and optimize digital ad campaigns across multiple channels. So it's really nice omni-channel approach to manage across the marketing mix. And then again, Google Bard, you know, analyze and tr transcribe audio data from, uh, from customer calls, webinars, other sources. So any type of conversation you have, it gets transcribed, it highlights, um, you know, the different nuances within, within a conversation. It, if you're sharing video or graphics, it brings that into, in, into the mix too. So these are great brainstorming and writing AI tools. And on the right, um, we don't really have time to go through all these. We will go through some demos in a few minutes, but we made a list for you of voice AI tools and video AI tools as well. And then again, we'll get to ChatGPT and just give you some, some prompts here. So you can use ChatGPT for creating landing pages and event ticketing forms promoting the event or you know, event invitations, event scripts. It could be the whole script when you introduce speakers. Tell ChatGPT, you know, the name of the speakers and 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 their background, and you know, the the whole effective marketing strategy behind an event, and even you know, the emails and phone and phone scripts, sales scripts. Um, on the right, there there's there all kinds of different prompts that we've used. I'm looking for a type of email that will convince my ideal persona to sign up for a subscription by explaining the value it brings and benefits they'll receive. So you customize these scripts to be more about your nonprofit, but you can literally ask ChatGPT, create a, a PowerPoint presentation for this audience around my, um, around a diabetes association to fundraise around an event and it will create an actual deck with all the different headlines and subjects and, and, and get you started. Everything from the script to the presentation materials. Um, can you generate a social media content calendar for my target audience that aligns with my brand messaging and promotes my, my nonprofit? So there's a lot of great things you can do with ChatGPT in terms of marketing. Um, it, it could start the outline, and then once you get the outline, then you could go specific around each piece, whether it's a sp specific social media post or the content on a specific slide, but it could really cut the time down. Then you bring your subject matter experts in to show, you know, unique, specific 
real life examples. And that's how you can, you can bring that to life. And this is great for no smaller nonprofits who might just have you know, one marketing person or an executive director is doing everything. This can really help out. So now um, it's time we have, now's the fun part. I know we've blown through this, but we're gonna give some, some live demonstrations of how to use these tools uh, in, in real time. So Tara, if you can uh, share your screen, we'll do that. Okay. Hello, beautiful people. How are you today? So I'm gonna share my screen and I hope you see everyone see my screen. So I know this AI tech and everything is really like difficult thing to understand when someone is not tech savvy. So I, I don't have enough time today, but I'll try to explain everything in 10 minutes. And these 10 minutes, I want everyone to focus so that you can get everything out of it. Like it will be super easy. If you have any question, just let me know. There's a lot of tools to cover, but let's see how far we can go. So I'm gonna start with chat GPT. It's a um, pretty simple tool, but very powerful. Uh, how you can sign up for chat GPT, go to uh, openai.com and you can easily sign up, like put your information and you can, you, can, you can easily sign up to this tool. They have a free and paid both version. Uh, currently I'm showing you the free version, but if you need, you can go for the paid version. And uh, when you uh, come to this uh, page, like you'll see uh, the chat GPT dashboard will be something like this, uh, here you can see. Uh, I can see from uh, like a couple of things. You don't have to say anything here. Just uh, look at my mouse. Uh, let me mark it up so you can get an idea. Like let's say this one. So we need to focus on that part. So we are going to ask question here and it's gonna reply the question. Like there will be, there's not a human actually, it's a robot that's gonna reply all of your question. That robot is super powerful and super intelligent that it can surpass any human with the information. So let's get started. So what do you have to do? You have to be uh, very uh, careful. Careful means asking when you're asking a question. So like uh, you have to ask a question, um, what I can say, in, in a way, like the better question you ask, the better answer you will get. So what I did like, uh, as we don't have a lot of time today, so I, I uh, put some question here to show you how how we can ask the question and get an uh, idea. So what I'll do, I'll uh, try to warm up the chat GPT here. So I started a thread and I ask a question, write a buyer persona for my nonprofit organization. So this, there's a first question. You can do like, uh, assume uh, my nonprofit is uh, helping someone uh, like uh, for uh, like cancer, like uh, for treatment cancer, uh, something like this, whatever it is. So you have to uh, tell ChatGPT, my nonprofit is doing this, and these are the audience, and they have the problem. Once you give the information, then you can start the conversation. Keep in this mind, in this thread, when, whatever question you are going to ask, it's gonna uh, reply the answer based on the previous question that you have asked here. So every thread has a uh, ChatGPT use uh, data from every thread that you have put here. So. As I ask you a question, write a persona for my nonprofit organization. It reply with me the answer. So I can see it created uh, a buyer persona for me. And let's see if we have something specific. It's not a specific question because I never mentioned my nonprofit organization and also never uh, like uh, tell a uh, chat GPT uh, what uh, use case and what kind of problem we are solving for the society. So you have to put it here. Then you'll get the uh, clear and concise answer and you're going to love it. For sure. And once you see uh, the answer, then you can ask like next question. What I ask here is like uh, write a thank you letter to send to donors for NPO name, like your organization name. And uh, then you will get the template right away. So I can say like um, whatever your question you're asking, try to ask it like in a detailed way. So ChatGPT to get the, to know, like ChatGPT can know your organization and everything like in clear and that can provide you the better information. Here you can see a template and I ask like how to write a thank you letter to send to dinners and that's uh, using your organization name. So all the uh, prompt you see, it, you, you'll find it on the PowerPoint slide. So you don't have to worry about this. And here you can see next thing, I ask a next question, uh, write and sales copy for my, nonprofit donation page. So I just ask a simple question, but when you are going to try this, 
I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say like add some more information on that question, like asking, adding information about your nonprofit organization and also the specific industry that you are in so that it can get better sales uh, copy for you, I can see. So I ask a sales copy that I can use. I ask a copy, like then uh, I also ask a, a thank you letter, like same question, like as above. I'll write a thank you letter to send to dinners and PO name and it automatically like in a couple of seconds it's gonna reply you the question with the answer. And then he can say write a social media post for your nonprofit name. Then I ask it like write five social media posts for your fundraising. Like you can say like write 50 social media posts for nonprofit uh, for, for your uh, event, fundraising event. That's gonna write within a couple of seconds. That is super powerful like then you can even ask also like add some hashtag to write this thing like uh, when they're writing this copy. And uh, if you want to create a predictive models, then you can click on like, you can say like write a predictive models for, my, uh, for your organization. Also add uh, more information here as well. So when you are writing this, uh, asking this question, uh, then you'll get the answer. Like try to be specific. Uh, try to ask a better question so that you can get better result, uh, better answer. So you can take a look on that. And uh, then I go for like writing mission statement uh, for the organization you have. So it's right, right uh, yeah, uh, mission statement for your organization that you can easily do like um, copy and apply it whenever you want it to. And informal appeal letter to former volunteers to donation to my, it will be nonprofit, your organization to my organization. So then it will reply with the answer, like a template, like within a couple of seconds, it's written down everything. Like uh, you don't have to wait for something like copy, wait for content, stuff like that to get started. You have everything you needed and just copy and um, paste, like ask a question. The only limitation you'll have is your imagination and that's it. If you, if you can ask the right question, you'll get the right answer. So then you can see, uh, write a job description for volunteers for recruitment for my NPO. Everything you need for uh, like a creating a job description for your volunteer to recruitment. And here you can see the answer as well with the template. So what I did here is like, I tried to, um, Ask the question before so that uh, we can we can see the answer how it replies. Or if I'm going to do this now, it's gonna take a couple of minutes, couple of seconds. So, uh, in, in like that gonna delay a couple of things. So what I did, I ask all of the question and show you how a powerful chat GPT can be. It is more powerful than what I'm showing you here, and I have to show you a couple of other tools. But uh, check this out, like it's really powerful. I ask. Uh, ChatGPT to write a VSL script for my NPO, encouraging people to donate to your NPO, my NPO. So it write a VSL mean a video sales later. So ask him uh, to create a video sales later. So we created a sales copy. We created an email template. We created a, a what I can say, a VSL. We created a follow up email and everything. Whatever you want, you can uh, ask here, and it will it's gonna create it for you. So what happens next? What's next? Let me show you how powerful it is. Now you have the video script ready. Within two minutes, you can do the video with the voiceovers and the avatar right away. Let me show you the powerful platform with AI. So now we are going to sh uh, see some magic of AI. So let me go to, um, let me see which one I can show you. So this one is DID, it's, it's still on beta. You can still use this. What do you have to go? You have to go to this website it's called DID, D hyphen ID.com and uh, sign up is free and click on create video. Now, the script that you have created on right hand side, paste it. And on, on that part, like on left hand side, you can see like a couple of avatars, like choose a presenter. So you, you can choose uh, any of this presenter you want. Like even you can upload your image. It's gonna create uh, the video using your image. So let's say if I use this uh, person image uh, avatar. So they have already 
a couple of avatar ready that you can use or you can generate or you can upload your picture and that's going to create the video using your picture or using your avatar and on the right hand side you have to you're going to paste the script and you choose uh, what what language you want it to uh, the voiceover you want it to be like um, it has lots of language like the it's massive like if you want to target 100 countries you can do 100 voiceovers in like couple of minute and it's, it's how much it costs i think five or ten bucks maximum like if you want to go for the premium it's going to save you like around more than five to ten thousand dollar minimum for just doing this kind of video hey guys you can choose a voice uh, the person like whatever tone whatever voice you want it to like you can get it here so you copy the script you came to did you pass the script you pick the avatar and it's going to create the video for you within one minute and you have the video already download it start promoting and then uh, there's another platform called Syntasia. Mm, that's also powerful Syntasia is a platform where you can create video here you can see the person you see here is not real human that's a robot that's actually a robot so they, they say like uh, you can watch the demo and do the same thing like I showed you like on DID. You can see uh, they have a couple of avatars that you can see like this person as well are not human. It's actually avatar, robot. And you can use uh, his picture avatar and create a video for you within a couple of minutes. Like you just have to copy the script and paste it here. So then I go to next uh, platform. Okay, before I go to other platform, let me show you a couple of things. Like Microsoft has volunteer management and volunteer engagement option available. Like you, you, you can go there and uh, Microsoft already have this software and you can go there and apply for your organization. It, it's gonna supercharge your organization with the power of Microsoft AI. And uh, then we have Google. I think I'll talk about this Google grant. Google grant is giving you, I think $10,000 also like if you are a nonprofit, They'll give you $10,000 credit that you can use on uh, Google Ads. A lot of things. Uh, I'll recommend everyone to go to, go to the google.com and slash grant, and you can see uh, things here. Then we have uh, Doveverse is a platform where you can do the voiceover. Like same thing, you go uh, to ChatGPT, copy the script, voice script, came to Doveverse, and paste it here and create a voiceover within a couple of seconds. Then you can use this voiceover script anywhere you want. And that's like, it's a couple of seconds to do. And uh, I think it has more than 30 to 40 plus language. And I bet you can't actually uh, differentiate, is it a human or uh, AI voice? It's, it's really hard to differentiate. It's, it's, it's like it's the same human voice. And then we have the same thing like it's called Descript. It has a lot of things out there. Uh, I hope uh, we have this on the resources and also on the slide that you can uh, take a look on that. I have linked down everything you need. You can click and go there and see like each of this tool and try to uh, try this out uh, at least one time and you, you can see the power of it. And then we have Resemble AI. This is one of the powerful AI for creating voices. Like you can see, clone your voice. It's really powerful. Text to speech, speech to speech. Neural engine, everything it has like you need for voiceover, you'll find it here. And uh, Notion AI. So there's a page for Notion AI. I, I don't think I have enough time to uh, show you, guide you through, but just to let you know, like if you go to Notion AI, they have a couple of templates ready that you can uh, use right away, like for the management job board and the donation management stuff like that. They have ready-made template that you can use. And even if you like, you can get a couple of good discount if you're on TechSoup. Okay, you can see they have directly TechSoup integration and also stuff like that. So uh, there's a lot of other tools out there like Hootsuite. So let me sh show you another tool. Uh, it's adcreative.ai. So we created on chat, on chat GPT, we created a couple of ad uh, copy, remember? So what do you have to do? You have to come to adcreative.ai click on generate ad creatives and paste your create uh, text here. That's gonna, then what will happen is gonna create uh, five or 10 ad 
image and create it for you within a couple of seconds that you can start downloading and using for your promotion. And using Hot Suite, you can do like automation stuff like uh, schedule stuff like that and do the automation uh, for your marketing. Like it, it, it has integration with this at Creative, very powerful. And there's a couple of other tools like Stevie AI that's gonna create animation video. A one click AI, I think I'll talk about this. If we have an time today, I'm gonna talk about this. Audit base to audit, like uh, someone is asking about like contract and how they can do the audit in budgeting option. The audit base is an AI that can do the stuff for you. And lastly, we have presentation AI can create presentation within one minute. So that's it. I have, if I have more time, uh, I may share a lot of tool out there, but whatever tool you needed, you will find it on the slide. So thank you, everyone. That's it. Incredible job. We're waiting for um, yeah, Kyle or Joe. This is awesome. Yeah, that was great. Thank you, Tara. So Jill, kind of give us a quick background on, on some marketing web support that we do uh, in, in conjunction with TAP Network or with TechSoup uh, and how we can help, you know, kind of help you implement some of these things we talked about today. And then we'll, we'll jump into, into um, some questions. I know we wanna, we're probably going to go a little bit over, but um, we've got a little bit more time after this so we can stay on and answer some questions for you all as well. Sure. Great. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Tarek. It's a great presentation. Um, I know it's all, it's, he, he can go crazy with this stuff, but it's so amazing. The animations, the video, um, the text, put, pulling all these things together, super creative. And really the trick is how do you connect all these different pieces of software? And when you do it the right way, you, you can create uh, like a marketing masterpiece, as, as you would call it. But yeah, so so tech, TechSoup and TAP Network, we're, we're partners. Like I said, if you go to the services page on TechSoup, Click on services, scroll down, you'll see website and digital marketing. And if you click to those pages, that's us. And you'll see our host, whole host of services, everything from just you know, low cost, $100 type consultations to where we'll build out websites and marketing services. We have marketing services starting at $4.99 a month, where we do everything from search engines, social media, all the planning, strategy, branding, analytics, we can work with your team to, to map out your strategy, everything to much larger initiatives uh, like folks with the United Way and American Heart Association where we're managing very large um, integrated campaigns. But for the smaller nonprofit, we have uh, programs that start at $4.99. And if you click over to website services on, our, uh, on that drop-down menu, we also uh, provide website services, everything from a quick starter website for you know, around ten thousand dollars, five to ten thousand dollars, to to much larger enterprise websites, but then also a lot of great services to maintain your website, to improve it, uh, and have basically have your own website development team at, at your fingertips, and that starts around five hundred dollars a month as well. So hopefully, um, if if you're interested, pop over and 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 you can schedule some time to talk with us um, and we can go over these services with you. Again, AI is, is a part of all these conversations to see if that can help lower costs and, and, and time for you as, as well. Um, so we'll, yeah, yeah. so now it's, it's Q&A time. I know we don't have much time. Uh, we'll send out this deck and we're recording of, of the Zoom uh, presentation and we'll see uh, Aretha, if we do have time for some questions, we'll, we'll take them now. Yeah, absolutely. And feel free to use as much time as you need. Um, Kyle, did you want to read the questions or you want me to read them? Um, I can read them. So I have the ones that are in the questions um, and I was kind of trying to track some that came through chat, but uh, there was a lot going through. Um, so I'll jump in and I can take some of these. Maybe I'll turn some over to Tarek. Um, so one of the first ones was like, is there a way to identify something that's been created through AI? Uh, that's a great question. Um, there's, there are definitely tools out there that you can put things in. A lot of times, like I think he was, he was going, like Tarek was going through one that will actually do the opposite. It'll take something that was created with AI and make it um, seem, make it less, you know, plagiarized or anything like that. Um, but there are, there are some tools that we could, uh, 
share some links to that would allow you to see if something's been generated through AI. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, th there's a couple of tools out there, like uh, AI detector is one of them where you can go and paste your chat GPT answer and it, it can automatically detect uh, the, is it created by AI? And if you want to surprise, if you want to bypass this AI detector, you can use Quillabot or any kind of paraphrasing tool to uh, like recreate or like it, it can bypass easily uh, from like uh, detecting from is AI. So then AI can detect is AI content. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Terry. Um, David asked if as businesses adopt AI into the workplace, what HR needs, HR areas need to be added to employee handbooks like privacy sharing, use for work, et cetera. So obviously we can't give uh, you know legal advice here. That's that's um specific to you know your addition, your your organization, uh, your company, your setup, your corporation, whatever it might be. Um, but this is definitely something that is is very important to, to keep in mind um, as you are one getting information from and then giving information to these different tools and platforms uh you know thinking about how that has an impact on your organization has an impact on privacy uh has an impact on you know how your employees take that there's another question in here and a very common question is like am i going to be replaced by ai right so you know we talk about a lot of things that that can that ai can do and you know tara was showing how to ai can give a presentation for you right we showed how ai can create uh, you know, ads and social media and, and websites and stuff like that for you. And, you know, just maybe a little bit of, of deeper thinking like, okay, well, hey, we know this organization Tap Network creates what builds websites and, and right and does adver advertising and, and creates strategy and creates content for people. So, you know, can we just, are they going to be obsolete? I think the answer to, to, to that is no, if like you don't want, but if you don't adopt AI, um, then I think you, you, you quickly become obsolete. You know, if you, as I was saying, like, if someone's sitting there spending their entire day just entering things into a computer, um, and I can take a, a CSV and up and upload it to to ChatGPT and have it format it for me or something like that, that replaces that person's role. But I still need someone to do that. I still need, you still need someone to know how to do that to have the context behind it, uh, and then hopefully the, the the goal long term is to to elevate above that so that you don't need to do the remedial thing like loading the data in, like loading the data into a spreadsheet or from a spreadsheet. And now you can take that and extrapolate data from that or find a way to use that to identify, um, you know, new donor or something of that nature. Um, someone asked, how do you give inf enough information to the AI to predict fundraising? Uh, that's also a great, great question. Again, also specific to the organization. Um, it, ChatGPT is not going to be able to predict fundraising for your organization, but there are there are fundraising tools that will allow you to that will require request inputs uh, and information about previous fundraising uh, and the more granular you can get the more specific that can be so if you just say I raised hundred thousand dollars last year tell me how to raise hundred thousand dollars this year it's going to be pretty generic but if you say uh, you know here's a list of donors here's some some information about them or connected to like your Salesforce account or something like that. Um, you know, help me identify an area like areas for or room for improvement, areas for improvement, or uh, you know, create a an estimate of how I can how much I can expect to raise this year if X, Y, and Z um, you know are in place. Uh, so it's I don't say how to give it enough information. I think you can almost not give it too much information, but to be very specific on what you what you what you want to know from what you put in. Uh, this one, next one is, this is a good one. Tarek, I know Tarek knows the answer to this. Um, I believe I saw that chat GPT is free up to a maximum number of characters and what it generates. Is that true? Well, that's not actually it's free and uh, you can use it unlimited amount. You want that uh, differentiate with the premium and free one is the data. Uh, with the uh, paid version, you will get better answer with better data. Like if you want to do research, if you want to get a specific answer, uh, like for predictive analysis and getting some report, I recommend to go for the paid version. Except that you can use the free one. That's enough. I'm still using free. So, you know, like it can generate 5,000 words if you want. That's it. Great. Uh, and then I'll add to that too. So as he was saying from the data standpoint, so 
chat GPT, the, the open version, they, they, they use different data models or different models underneath them. I think GPT uses a Da Vinci model, which is supposed to be uh, sort of similar to, it's supposed to be sort of all encompassing, but there's, there are models that are better at scientific uh, research, scientific background. There are models that are better at mathematics and modeling. There are models that are better at, at, at specifically nat natural language processing. So it's just a matter of which model you're using uh, from the OpenAI platform that shows up either on ChatGPT or some of the other systems that, that use uh, that OpenAI platform. Um, this is a great question. So Jennifer asked if, with regards to the chat bots, how do organizations factor in the need to be trauma informed in our responses to questions? My organization does anti-trafficking work and I get how the chat bots can reduce workload, but it makes me very nervous. Thoughts, question, she asked a question. So um, that's, it's partially training. It's, you know, so it's, it's, None of these chatbots, well, there are chatbots that you can just put on your website and you can ask, have it have it do some, hey, welcome to my website. What's your name? What's your email? What are you interested in? But you have to give it some context. You have to train it and say, you know, in this case, do these things. So it becomes more of like a, a, a knowledge base of sorts. And then it can, it can what, it's, what chatbots do well is process that question and say, this person is interested in these things. Which of these do you want to show them? Without you... I think if you take that at the first level, it'd be better not to just throw a chatbot on your website and leave it unmanned. Have a chatbot there that can ask the first few questions and then helps that what that would do is help direct them to the right, right department. Um, I can, you can go a level further than chatbots. I think if, if you've in the last you know six months, especially call into a customer service line uh, for a bunch of different things. Verizon phones, I think, does it, uh, but other other you know services. They'll actually have someone on the other end and says, you know, if you're interested in this, let, tell me a little bit more about, you know, why you're calling today. And it's not an actual person on the other end asking you that question. It might sound like a person now, um, but then you're able to talk to it. Say, you could be booking travel. Say, I would like to book a flight to Las Vegas from Philadelphia on uh, April 12th. It can start looking those flights up and stuff like that for you. But then eventually you're going to have to, you know, you, you might have a question. So it's going to send you off to a, to a person. So for the interim time, use the chat bot or use those, those tools to uh, to take some of that workload off of you internally. So you're not answering every question right away, not asking every, not asking, asking for those answers right away, but still able to, to divert them, especially in an organization with sensitivity like that. I wouldn't let a machine do it right away, you know, let, let it do all the answers for you. Yeah. I think, I mean, for trauma informed, the, the one positive way you could use it, I mean, Things need to be HIPAA compliant, but let's say you're trying to get someone to dial 211 and their conversion rate is low on the website, you could use the chat bot to really educate people so that conversion goes up and, and you're getting the qualified calls are, are, are coming through. But, but that's a great question. I think as the technology gets more advanced, they're always, you know, even there's human error when people call 911. So um, if, if we can help increase the conversion rate or educate people through a chat bot, that might get them to, to make those phone calls. Um, Jennifer asked if, do the predictive analytics tools complete an external environmental scan as well as looking at internal data? Uh, that's specific to the tool. Um, so different tools yet will can do that. Um, like Google Trends and things like that will look at external data and then you would wanna lay your, lay your data over that. But to be specific, to, to give you, you know, pop, results or predict prediction based on your specific organization, you're going to have to give it some data uh, and say that, you know, here, here's what we expect. Here's our demographic, something like, um, like Google ads, Google ads, Google AdWords is using predictive analytics to tell you, here's what we think the size of your audience is. Here's what we think your conversion rate could be. Here's how much the spend is going to be uh, based on this, because you're giving it inputs and saying, here's my average order value. Here's, you know, the, the, number of clicks it takes to get there. Here's what, you know, I expect someone to do once they get there. Um, Misha asked, can you talk more about the way you can use it to automate scheduling and invoicing? Yeah, so I don't, Tarek, I'm not sure. Do you come across anything to do scheduling and in, like specifically scheduling invoicing? Because that would still be an application. Um, you could feed some data into ChatGPT and ask you to make it, ask it to make you a schedule. Um, but that's going to be data, like the, it's going to be data in, data out. Um, but if you, if you find a tool out there, there, there's there's definitely tools out there that use AI to you know create more concise scheduling. I don't know if you 
this is one you've come across specifically Tara. Okay, yes, uh, I found uh, there's another one we call is the auditbase.co that you can uh, try and see like it, it gives uh, contract and uh, invoicing like automated. Um, there's a couple of steps you have to take first, but uh, once you did like, then it becomes really easier to send invoices. Really super easy. And then there's another, there's another tool called Motion. Uh, the website is usemotion.ai. That's a scheduling tool, but it's actually an individual scheduling tool. You can also do team scheduling. What that does is, is it, it looks at your calendar and actually becomes almost like a, an administrative assistant or a virtual assistant for you and says, uh, you know, you give it a bunch of tasks, you have all of your, your meetings on there. It'll help identify like what tasks you should do, what, what things you should complete during those open time blocks. And it learns uh, about you specifically for, from a scheduling standpoint. Um, can you give us an idea of how much these AI tools will cost to purchase and implement? Uh, how much training is necessary to use these tools? Uh, so that it really runs the gamut. You know, as we showed you, there's definitely free tools. There's free versions of tools out there. Um, like ChatGPT is free, but you can pay for the plus version to have better data behind it. Um, so that's that's a very a very wide answer. Um, as far as how much training, same thing there. It's 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 a specific to what the tool is, what you need from the tool. Some of them are very easy to use, and but a lot of them do have a lot of uh, some good training behind it. I saw someone earlier asked about Jasper. Jasper is like a content creation tool. It can write stuff like headlines. It can write full blog posts, emails. Uh, you know, you can have it create like content calendars and things like that for you. And it's got a lot of great training in the tool. It tells you how to do it. They have like an onboarding series. It says, this is what you should use. Here's some other tools you can um, utilize. Um, so that might be, you know, one that's that's got the great, you know, I would say great training wheels and great handholding as you're using it. But then there's other ones like the you know, Tarek might have shown you today that are a little bit more either, um, you know, you kind of either not figure out yourself, but like self-explanatory or they might not be as well documented yet uh, in some cases. Uh, is there any AI you would recommend for helping with budgets or contracts? I don't know, I keep saying this, but like that's, I think that is specific to the organization. Um, you know, everyone's kind of got a, a different a budget, but I don't, Tarek might have a, one he's seen that there would be contractual or something. Uh, I would like to say like there's a website called futurepedia.io. That's a website where you can find um, current and future all the AI tools out there in the internet. And you can go up there and take a look on that and find which way it works for you. Like I think more than 300 plus AI tools out there. Go out there, explore it, and you'll find some tools that are going to blow your mind for sure. Um, Tom asked, given some of the recent lawsuits against tools like Stable Diffusion, what's your current thinking about the use of content created by AI based on public content? This would include things like GPT-3, GPT-4. Great question. Um, as, as Tara was mentioning earlier, you can take it. You could also make sure that it, it, re, it recalibrates that for you. But I think, you know, we, we, we still need to have the human, the human layer on this. You still need to to put your, you know, your own, uh, to do a little bit of your, I guess, kind of your own research. One thing to, to mention, like, as we mentioned about ChatGPT, like all, all their information is relevant up to 2021. So let's say you ask ChatGPT to create you a marketing campaign and a brand. It might actually create you something that exists now that did not exist in 2021. So you're going to want to check against that. Or if you said, hey, uh, I'm having an event on, on, don on about donor matching, uh, create me some example, um, URLs for the donor matching conference. There might have been a donor matching conference in 2021 or 2022 or 2023 that Chat GPT doesn't know about, and but it might recommend donormatching.com or donormatchconference.com or something like that. And then you know if you went and started creating a bunch of marketing collateral and stuff around that, and then went back and later and looked, they're like, oh crap, this already exists. What you know you led me in the wrong direction. So you're still going to want to do some of your like some of your own um, like checking and background on that too to make sure it's not copyrighted, there's not plagiarism, um, you're not you know, using someone else's original work. Um, someone said, should we update, or Connie asked, should we update our privacy statements to reflect our use of AI tools? Are there any HIPAA concerns? Uh, yes. So absolutely, uh, especially if you're, if you're collecting information, especially through a chatbot or something like that, making sure that, that whatever that is, that is has a business associate uh, uh, agreement in place um, or had or is you know is HIPAA compliant 
um, because you, your organization putting that in place, you that's now an extension of your organization. So you're on the hook for um, for that privacy, those concerns. So make sure that's disclosed. Again, we can't provide any real legal advice for you on that on, on that that specifically, but I would keep that in mind as you're you're, you're implementing these tools. Um, what was the site or the list of AI services which Tarek mentioned? I think that's, I mean, that'll be all included in this, uh, in our document we share. Do you see any uses for AI in religious organizations? How would faith integrate with AI? That's a great, that is a great question. Um, same thing, like it's, it's, it's going to be based on uh, the data that it has to model off of. So, you know, you can use it for operations, you can use it for, uh, you know, whether there's membership or, you know, attraction or something like that and give it as much context as you want. I think this relates to um, very specifically to what Tarek was showing you, how we can sort of train the model or, you know, for you specifically. So telling it more about what you expect to see. So this is my, this is the faith. Here's who we want to attract. Here is, you know, some information about, you know, when we have our, some of our programming, please, you know, create a, a, a sample schedule for me, knowing this information. Um, does TechSoup have promotional or subscription pricing for AI programs like ChatGPT? That might be an Aretha question. As, as I said, ChatGPT is free now. I don't think they. I don't think there's a promotional pricing currently, but I'm not. I can't speak for TechSoup. I I don't think so. Um, if Gail is here, she can answer that in the chat. Great. Uh, Jeff asked, "Is there a way? Is there any way to evaluate a tool in order to decide whether that tool would worth the time to learn it?" Yeah, most of these are going to have like a free a free trial or a 30 day money back, you know, guarantee. All this stuff is, I mean, AI has been around for years. You know, the, the predictive modeling has been around for years. Machine learning has uh, been around for decades. Um, but these are new tools. So, you know, a lot of these companies know that they have they have a lot to lose if, uh, you know, if they try to force adoption or, you know, they they kind of fall on their face. So they're, they're there's a lot of uh, flexibility there with that. And there, as I mentioned earlier, there's also a lot of, you know, documentation and training and handholding that goes along with a lot of these because these companies are, are also still learning, you know, you know, how are people using these tools? What, what's the most, um, you know, kind of sought after, you know, use case for this or, you know, what, what are our, our clients want? So you might actually be surprised if you jump in and start using these tools and you start asking questions, you could be talking to the founder of the, of the, the company or the, the developer of that tool. Um, so yeah, definitely. I definitely think trying these out to decide if if that's um, you know it's going to fit your organization and if it's worth you kind of learning more is important. And uh, what else? we've got a bunch in this chat. Probably do a couple more, uh, and then we said we'll, we'll share this and we'll share our information. If you have you know specific questions for us, you can follow up with us certainly offline. Um, do, 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 just. Going through this chat. I put a couple to the host and panelists, so if, I don't know if it's still yeah, there. Me, yep. Sorry. There's a few to the host and panelists. Is there a tool that will help collect and analyze data that can be used in grant writing requests? Um, I think there's one or two that we have in the in the document. If not, we can share those with you, with you all. Uh, but it's it's you know you could you could get as, as I would say as simple. You could use ChatGPT for that again. It's just going to be telling ChatGPT, giving it more context on what what your what you want the grant what the grant's for uh, and what the parameters are. So say I need you know a three page or however many you know word response to this that needs to address X, Y, and Z. I would start. I would start high level and say I need an outline that addresses these things, and then it would give you an outline, and then you could break out each piece of the outline and say, let's just say it was five bullet points. Pick the first bullet point and say, you know, please elaborate on this bullet point, and then it would be on you to collect all that that copy and that content back up to be to be your grant response. You're, it's very unlikely you're going to get a full. You know, it's not going to write the whole grant for you, but it can help you with the outline, and then you can you can drill down in on the. Um, uh, on that individual bullet point. Mm, I think 
So I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, this a lot of these links, a lot of these uh, video or a lot of these uh, technologies are going to be in the presentation uh, that we'll share with you all. It should be available either later today or tomorrow via email. Uh, so be on the lookout for that from us and from TechSoup. Uh, but if you have any questions, it, those those links are in the doc. Uh, our emails are in there as well. You know, feel free to reach out. Um, we're happy to have this conversation offline. And thank you all for joining us today.